my name is Matt and you're watching my channel about code and technology and stuff. And I wanted to talk today about a little subject, game engines, and why you should have your own. I think pretty much every programmer, anybody who's studying computer science, especially anyone that's going into the game development realm, should be working on their own game engine. And the probably the biggest argument against this is, well, there's already so many, what am I really going to contribute? And that, that is a counterintuitive argument because if you want to contribute ever, you have to get some practice. You can do that on your own because coding is free. You just need the knowledge. And if you're studying it, it is such a great way to start honing your skills and learning so much more about how things are structured, how game engines work, all the basically all the underlying work that goes into it. So I've been working on this engine of my own called Ancient Archer for quite a while now. This is a game engine I started several years ago. It sort of started back when I was taking a graphics programming class and I was trying to figure out how to make a game basically and just kind of getting some things in there to handle it. And we were not allowed to use a game engine for this class because we were learning from, from the ground up. If you want to program games, sure, you can just jump into a game engine and follow tutorials and whatnot, but it's going to take you a really long time to kind of get the core knowledge and understand where all those base stuff comes from because it's, it's going to seem like some kind of uh, some kind of magical black box. But once you actually start diving into an engine and making your own, you start to see, oh, this is how this works. So let me talk a bit about this engine and what's changed since the last vlog. Since the last vlog, well, it's been a while. I think the last vlog, I had some really ambitious targets. I said stuff like, uh, I wanna get animations working, I wanna get all the textures working, I wanna get some PBR lighting. And I had like a whole bunch of really big things that would have taken a whole team of people months to do. And it just wasn't realistic. And the more I thought about it, uh, the more I realized that. So I've just started to pick little things here and there and just incrementally improve it. So what I've done since the last vlog, well, this is now a library. So you can get the whole engine as just a library and use it on a project. And that really simplifies the structure because before it was like, it, it was all just one program. It was just an application and you would have to add like a main to run and it, it was weird. It was very weird. But since I've been learning a lot about libraries, I finally took the time to, to basically turn this into a library. So if you look at this main AA engine, it is just a static library. I could do it as a dynamic one as well. But that way I could actually ship the binaries to somebody without all the code. Well, I guess they'd need the headers and they could just use it without worrying about the behind the scenes code. So that is a pretty cool thing. And as I go on and, and work on it, I'm basically just, I just keep adding things. I've got a few demos just to test that everything was working. So now that my engine is set up as a library, I can basically make executable projects or just side projects and just link it. So here I've got a, uh, another project I just named Classic Asteroids where I'm gonna try and recreate Classic Asteroids with my engine. Cause if I can get all that to work, that'll be stuff I can test my engine with and kind of know what I need to do next. So let's check out what this asteroid look like, looks like and I'll show you uh, just real quick a little about it. So I made all these models with Blender and textured them with Blender and just loaded them up with my engine. As you can see, I got some, some asteroids that actually spin randomly and I got all the movement sorted out, which uses rotation and just some simple math to tell what direction you're going in so that you can move forward. And I made just a little object to fire and currently I am working on all the colliding stuff and learning about that. I've been studying a lot on that. I kind of had some basic versions of it in, but it's not really good enough to use in the long run. So I've got to make some more improvements. Uh, if you have any good recommendations for physics libraries that are like really lightweight, I might add them. I thought about adding bullet physics, but it's a bit of a heavy library. I might still do it at some point if I really stay stuck on this too long. But once I get some colliders figured out, I'm gonna make this bullet explode these and they'll shatter into smaller ones and I'll add some particle effects and all that cool stuff. But for now, I just got the ship flying around. I've got a couple of these spawning as a demo. I could arbitrarily spawn any of, as many as I want and move them around, but they currently don't collide until I get that collider stuff sorted out. So once again, this is a great thing. As I study all this uh, collider stuff, this is, a, this is a, like a perfect place for me to test it where I don't have to be judged by a boss or a code review person at work or something. So even if you work on a game engine or on a game at work, 
you still might as well have your own game engine to work on so that you can test things initially in a place that's uh, you know just basically totally open and free since it's totally up to you uh, it's done in 168 lines of code including all the brackets and include and stuff so it's actually not all that much code to get all of that right there working and I can just keep adding to it as I figure out new stuff I think I've got all the stuff I declare I load the all the models required and it's just a few lines to load the models pretty simple to do once you have this engine included and then I've got some functions I add to the update for handling the keys and for controlling the ship and for firing the bullet and if anything is ever off I can always just go analyze this and adjust as needed like at some point I'll probably do Tetris and I'll make snake and I'll just keep going on and on and make a bunch of simple games is basically the plan at first I was making like complicated 3d games where it was like a first person which actually worked half decently but as I made them I realized I began to realize how much stuff the engine was missing because I had to basically put program a bunch of stuff in the executable like a long time ago I did a demo where it was sort of like Minecraft and I could interact with blocks but all that block stuff was all in this application code and it should be in the engine right so that's basically what I learned I sort of figured it out in the application code but now I'm moving it into the engine so there's a lot of stuff like that it's just a, it's just a great learning experience you should definitely have your own game engine that's the whole point of this video and to show you the update about where this ancient archer vlog is I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.